Today I'm going to teach you how to make your own lead eyes in four different sizes and three different metallic colors, black, copper, and natural. As I just tied them all in these hooks so you can get a look at the size comparison from the side. You can see they ride pretty high. They tie in like any other one would. Just rest on there and tie on. So, there you have it. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is some solder. You can get this at any hardware store. This is 50-50. You can see that right there. It says 50-50. You can buy 60-40. 60-40 is 60% tin, 40% lead. This is 50-50. Uh, so then what you need to do is, this is about 1 8 inch diameter. So to make your lead eyes, this is our root material. You need to straighten some of this out. It's got lots of kinks in it. You don't want crooked lead eyes. So you can leave it on the spool and just work it a little bit until you can get it how you think you want it. Get nice and straight. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I, I rotate it around like this because then you can see flaws that you wouldn't see the other way. So get a piece of it roughly straight and you need some of these side snips. You can buy these at virtually any hardware store as well. You know. These are better than the big fat traditional side snips you might have uh, in your toolbox because the they're flat on this side and angled on this side the same. The blade you can see is angled on this side. But they're better because it's a very thin and very sharp. It'll cut perfectly flat. Even the old side snips you have are generally not perfectly flat in the back. There's a bevel on the blade even on that side. These are truly flat. Uh, which is absolutely necessary for making lead eyes the way I'm going to show you. So cut yourself a piece off like this. Well, so what you need to do is just eyeball cutting this off square. Like that. Now you have a relatively flat end. Like that. And then you decide how big you want it to be. And you turn the pliers around so that you're cutting flat side again and you know, estimate your size that you want try to get it as square as possible if you cut crooked then you're, you might want to cut crooked and have you know out facing eyes or back facing eyes I don't know but for square ones you would do this you just cut that piece off and what you have left is the pinched side of the lead or the you know the beveled side of the pliers and then this small piece that's perfectly flat on both ends the second thing you need, you'll, you will have to do a little customizing for, unless you happen to have some super skinny pliers. Uh, the pair that I have customized is one that has comes the same, similar brand to the other ones. They come pointy, but I broke the point off. Up close, they look like this. I just ground them down. I put them on a grinding wheel and ground them from both sides to try to keep it nice and even. It's quite thin maybe about a thirty-second of an inch between them and you can see they're really square. It's a little bit of a challenge to make sure that the top one and the bottom one are ground at the exact same thickness. It's easy to lean into it. I used a piece of wood to push on it so that it would be uh, as even as I could possibly get it. So what you'll do is put this piece right in the middle of those pliers and to tell that they're in the middle you'll want to tilt it up toward yourself if you look straight at it you can see I don't have it gripped very well so I want to look at the end again there that's a little better and then what I'm going to do is squeeze the pliers not all the way through just about like that you can see it's kind of furrowed right there a little bit and you can see the color change in the surface the finished result will look something like this like a Lincoln log from the side and then it'll have the little teeth in there whatever's on your pliers or none at all and of course that's going to be where your hook rides you know, your hook will ride right in there like that it nests the hook nicely and you'll find that the pliers when you squeeze them will often walk a little bit one side to the other and so when you tie it down to the hook, you'll want to check and make sure that you're tying down the side where the groove is in the is most in the center. These aren't perfect. 
Uh, you know, you can see on the end of it too, there's the where the snippers cut. It looks really bad in this close up. Uh, but you'll see that when you tie them on the hook, they look pretty good. All right, well, if you'd like to do this uh, production style, you're going to need uh, a little more equipment to be precise. This is just two pieces of wood I put together, but it's a tool. You know, just screw two pieces of wood together. I have four holes drilled here in the top, and those holes are in different depths, from shallow to the deepest. And they will. I will use that as a gauge to always cut off at the exact same size. So if I want to tie 30 of something, uh, I, all the exact same size lead eyes, I want them to have the same drop rate. I can manufacture the exact same ones. And then the only other tool feature of this block is this groove that I've put here. So you sort of straighten that up as best you can. And then what I'm going to do is this groove I'm going to use to make it, so you can see it's square, it's square to the block. And then I can take these cutters and hold them also square to the block. That way I can cut perfectly square without error. So I'll set it in the groove, put it on there, and I generally don't cut it there because I don't want to wiggle it. I'll pull it away and cut it. Now I'll stick it in this hole this, grab with my pliers here, pull it out, and then the piece I cut off, like that, it's going to be very, very square. That's going to be very square. The tool helps me to keep the edges perfectly square with each other and maintain the size. So I can do one after the next. Now I've got this funny beveled point. And again, I'll cut that square into my waste bin here. And which hole was I using? Oh, I was using that one right there. And the same thing. Pull that out. And then, so this is what you do. You just keep going over and over and over again until you get a whole bunch of them. I drilled one eighth inch holes here, which is the same diameter as this, so they're sticky. Uh, but I used the drill and kind of warbled it around a little bit to uh, widen the hole. You can go to the next size up, which is what, 9 64ths or something like that. Uh, but it makes the hole just a little too big, and then it sometimes will it'll lean to the side, and then you're not cutting straight again. So I like the really snug fit of drilling the one-eighth hole and then warbling it to color them so that you have the copper and the black. This is where you need a little more stuff. I'm going to put three in this cup, three in this cup. These will be my copper and black. And then you need to purchase a product like this. This is Novacan Black Patina. Its intended purpose is for people who work leaded glass. And this is the same thing, Novacan Copper Bright Patina. And what it does is it reacts with the lead and colors it. Uh, so then what you do is you only need the tiniest little bit. This is, both of these are blue when you pour them out. If you look in there, I'm just going to pour ooh, just the tiniest little bit. You hardly need any. And look, they're already turning black. You'll see the water kind of turns green. Do the same thing with the copper one. You can see these copper ones here. I mean the uh, lead. We'll turn them copper colored by doing the same thing. Just a little splash. Just the tiniest little bit. You don't need that little bit I'm putting in there could color a lot of lead. Same thing. You stir it around. And they start you stir it around, they start to get the copper color. Perhaps you can see that. And as soon as you've done that, then you need to get them out of the solution because they'll just continue to oxidize in there. And the best way to do that is get yourself several layers of napkin, dump them out, dump 
come out on there like that. Same thing over here. Don't let the two colors touch each other because it'll, it'll blend them. If you look there, you can kind of see that the copper ones are like a dull, flat, penny sort of a copper color. And the black ones are a very matte black. Here's some I've made. There's like a big sculpting pattern with the really heavy lead eyes to get you down deep. Like that. And then you may have watched my video on tying the wobble fly. It also has the lead eyes in more of a medium size. The color will wear off a little bit with time as you fish it. As with any lead eye, you can bump the color off. Uh, but you can also do more than that. You can color them by hand as well. If you don't like the, if you want to go with just the silver, here's what they look like in just plain gray lead, which I think is suitable. You can use white white out or paint of some kind that you like if you really want to get technical or be really lazy and just do what I do. And I color them with magic marker to the colors that I that match the fly. If I'm tying, you know, black, I color it black, brown, brown, there's pink, there's a little orange. That tends to work. Alright, there you have it. How to make your own lead eyes.